Hello and welcome to the Pastor's Corner. Today we will examine 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 from the English Standard Version. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. In my last devotional, I introduced the book of 2 Peter, and I called attention to three important statements that Peter makes. First, we should be happy to be slaves of God for life. Second, God gives us the faith to believe in and follow Jesus through Jesus' righteousness. Third, we are to know God and Jesus Christ more and more. This knowledge is not a superficial cognitive knowledge. Instead, it's a deep knowledge of God and Jesus Christ, which a follower of Christ only arrives at by spending a lot of time with him, meditating on his word, and silently staying in his presence. And now in verse 3, Peter again mentions the importance of knowledge of God. Peter states, as we come to know God deeply through spending a lot of time with him and in his word, he will give us everything that we need to live a godly life. So the question is, what do we need? We have already seen that it is initially nothing from us because we can only come to Christ if he draws us to himself. But after he draws us to himself, we need to humble ourselves before him and acknowledge that he is God and commit ourselves to deepening our relationship with him. We need to be filled daily with his spirit, allowing him to work in us and through us. In this way, we will be holy vessels that God can use to be light in this dark world. It is because of his glory and his goodness and excellence that he has called us not only to be slaves for life, but to become his adopted children. Therefore, it's not because of anything good in us that he does this, but only for his glory and for the honor of his name. Through God's calling in our life, he has given us precious and great promises. These promises are spiritual, not material in nature. And these promises he gives us help us to live godly lives before him. For example, he promises to watch over us and be with us through whatever difficulties we endure. He promises the kingdom of God if we persevere with him until the end. He promises to give us his Holy Spirit to help us and to guide us in our life. And through these precious and very great spiritual promises, he wants us to grow in our knowledge of him and share in the divine nature. We come to share in the divine nature after we have decided to leave behind the corrupt world and its evil pursuits and desires and become lifelong slaves to God. And Paul also mentions this in Romans 8 verse 29. Those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. It is his desire that we be conformed to the image of his son, by which we share in the divine nature of Christ. And this should also be our desire if we are Christ's followers. Paul again states this in Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 24. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the, res the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Is this your hope as well? Are you groaning inwardly, eagerly, awaiting your adoption as a child of God and redemption of your bodies? I hope so. Let us give glory to God for his calling our lives, and let us desire to know him deeper and strive to be conformed into the image of his son. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that you have given us everything in our lives necessary to live godly lives before you. And I pray, Lord God, that we might remember those great promises, those precious promises, those spiritual promises you have given us, that you will always be with us and you will help us through whatever difficulties we endure. 
that you have given us your Holy Spirit to be with us and to lead us and guide us. And you promise us the kingdom of God and treasure in heaven, Lord God, if we persevere with you. And we pray, Lord God, that we might remember these spiritual promises, that, they will, that these promises might encourage us as we live each day with you. I pray that we might desire to be conformed into the image of your Son and to share in the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, that that might be our desire, Lord God, to be transformed more and more into the image of your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.